The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today I have one of my first celebrities on the show, uh, Mr. Greg Kretschmar from WGIR. WGIR, WHEB, uh, WLKZ, WWOD, WMXR. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. Welcome to the it's show. It's all good. Thanks. Excellent. I just said it because make it easier on him. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we were talking a little bit off air how that you've been in this, this industry for Quite some time now, since 1987. That's 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 a long time. For yeah, that's uh, Paleolithic age. I think that's a <laughs> bit of a dinosaur. Yeah, I've been doing it a while. I started uh, I started at WHEB in Portsmouth in '84, right out of college, and I started doing mornings in '87. Uh, and then a couple years later, I went on to Rock 101 as well, and we kind of spread out since then. So yeah, it's yeah. been a while. You're, you're, you're spanning uh, all across New Hampshire, Keene, Laconia. Can, yeah, Keene, uh, Meredith, and Laconia, and Lebanon. And uh, you know Portsmouth and Manchester, so we like to, to be a regional kind of show thing. What, what's that process like for the other stations to, to pick you up? Is, is there a negotiation going on, or do they look at your ratings? Well, when it happens, yeah. I mean, ratings are, ratings are always a factor. That's the, that's the one right. thing that they look at because you have to generate revenue, you know, for the radio station. But what also what they're also looking at is content. You know, they want there's there's been a lot of shows. There's a lot of shows out there that are available that you can get, and local shows. And I think what they saw in us. Was a was an opportunity to to uh, have a, a bit of a bigger product, but also have a local product. You know, when when we get phone calls from from Lebanon, you know what I mean. I could say, oh yeah, right on the green. Or if it's it's Keene, I could say, oh yeah, right downtown. You know, it, it, all of us on the show are from New Hampshire. One right. guy's from Massachusetts, so it's local at the same time with having maybe a little bit bigger feel than. Uh, some other stations would have had otherwise. Do you broadcast from their their areas? I mean, do you go there and do? We do local from time shows? to time. Yeah, we do from we do from time to time. The show is based out of uh, out of Portsmouth because that's closest to where uh, I live. But um, yeah, so you know, we, uh, I drive around the state all the time. <laughs> and, and one of the one of the nice things about your show is is the fact that it's it's pretty raw. It's not, and when I see, mean by raw, it's it's just everyday people. Yeah, it's yeah. not raw in the sense that it's you know dirty. Um, right. Yeah. But it's all. But it is. It's everyday things that you go through. I mean, we talk about everything from, you know, we got a lot of celebrities and and rock bands and things. We took we do that, but we also talk about, uh, you know, things that happen in life. You know, um, you know the everyday things you go through as a as a parent, as an adult, right. as a sports fan, as a music fan. Uh, all those kind of things. Are things that people can about. relate to. Yeah. Yeah, on a regular basis. Yeah, and it's a warts and all kind of presentation. I mean, not all of it's not all of it's pretty. None of us are perfect. Right. You know, so. And and you're kind of removed from the 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 politics of the day. You know? Yeah, on purpose, <laughs> because right. because it's just ugly. You know, right. I, it, even any discussion, even when you're having a discussion with politics, you know, with your friends, it's going to be an argument. Yeah. Because that's all we know how to do now. It, I mean, it really feels that way. Right. It's like if you don't agree with me, you know, then you're a jerk. Yeah, I can't. We can't. I can't hear your point of view if it's different than mine. Right. And not get angry. I mean, I can, but I, I a lot of people can't. Yeah. And there's 24-hour news channels for that. There's enough of that bickering going on. It's everywhere, right? I don't yeah. want to add to that. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually a junkie of the politics, but at the same time, there's sometimes where I just need to vent. Oh, I pay attention. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Right. It's not that we don't pay attention, but it also has to be a time of day when there's some relief from that. Right. I would go home every day in, in the afternoon, and I would watch the news because I am a news junkie. Right. And what I found is every day after two hours of watching news channels with talking heads on both sides of the host arguing and screaming, it then it's just that, that, that negativity just sort of <laughs> get in, got into right. you. So, you know, there's got to be a, a break from that. So how do you start off a conversation in the morning? Is it, it well, you know what, I, I was uh, out 
walk in last night and I saw a beautiful sunset or I, I saw a lady who should be jogging but wasn't and a lady who shouldn't be jogging was or something. something yeah, I mean, it, it's really anything. It's, it's no different than how you would start a conversation with a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. The whole design of the morning buzz and the way we do it is, is for it to be, it's like if this was the kitchen table and you just came downstairs from, from, from you know, sleeping, you're getting ready to go to work or whatever, your friends are at the table mm -hmm. talking about things that you would talk about. And that's, we don't, there's no big setup or, or specific way we break into anything. It's just a natural conversation that can go anywhere. We can have an idea where we want it to go, right. but sometimes it goes that way. Yeah. Sometimes for the, for the good, sometimes for the not so good, but yeah. So you must have a good chemistry with your co-hosts. Uh, yeah, we got a great, you know, Andy Blacksmith, uh, Scott Roadkill, McMullen, Laura Boyce, Kelly Brown, and uh, Kayla, uh, Kayla Windsor, we all work great together. So, and it I, really is a nice atmosphere. If somebody's coming in with a bad mood, do you lighten them up, or do you, do you pick on them, or how does that um, work? Well, both. <laughs> I mean, you know, both. Sometimes we'll, be, sometimes we'll pick on them and make it worse, um, because we find it funny. But right. uh, a lot of times, you know, you can sit back, and if, if you're having a bad day, somebody else on the show can, can pick it up and give you a little bit of a break and, and help you out. And, and eventually, you, you do turn around. Right. That's the goal. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's you're, you're feeling the rewards and, and the chemistry with each other. Oh yeah, you just basically feed off each other. I, I think the, I think the listeners are smart. They can whenever you listen to the and you listen to the radio, oh, yeah. and you can tell when two guys or two people on the radio, maybe mm, you're they're, off they're, today they're pretending you're on. to be friends, but they're not. Mm -hmm. But this is different. This yeah. is different. I think people are smart. I think people get it. I think they know when you're faking it. So the only way to deal with that is to not fake it. And you, do you take in callers? Oh yeah. Yeah. And what, oh, yeah. How do you prepare for that? You right? don't. Hello, caller. No, you don't. You talk about whatever you're going to talk about, and then, you know, uh, the calls come in, and that's what's great about it. I don't want to know. I don't want to set up, and now we're going to take a call from Jim who's going to tell me this. Right. I, wanna, I want Jim to surprise me. I want Jim to add to the conversation just like a buddy would right. if he was sitting at the breakfast table. Yeah. You know, and that's the, the callers are, the, are one of the best parts of the show because they propel the show uh, into areas where uh, sometimes I never would have even thought to go. So that's always a surprise. Now, as you must have guests on the show. You, you said time. celebrities. Yeah. Some of the celebrities that you've had. Boy, um, the list would be shorter. <laughs> uh, the ones that come to mind, I mean, everybody from, you know, Steven Tyler, every member of Aerosmith, you know, Kiss, mm -hmm. uh, all the major bands have been on with us, Metallica. And on the other side, we do, you know, we do... Um, Morgan Freeman, you know, Glenn Close, Sylvester Stallone, uh, guys like that, um, sports guys, you know, uh, we've got, you know, Matt Chatham's on with us every week to review Patriots games, uh, Dick Bergren talks about racing, Coach Humili, UNH hockey, uh, you know, from Nesson, Jack Edwards talks nice. about the Boston Bruins, so we cover a lot of different areas, you know. Do you ever find yourself getting starstruck? Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, and I'm not afraid to say it. Because I, I think that's part of what's real. Like if I'm sitting there, when you're sitting there and you're, you're sitting there and you're talking in person to Don Rickles or B.B. King, oh, I, how do you not be, Don, how do you not yeah. be starstruck? I'm already laughing just thinking of Don yeah. Rickles. And yeah. he's yeah. the nicest man. Is he? And he, he sit down, I want you to talk to me, and you're in awe. And it's okay to be in awe. Sure. You know, I don't try to be, that's another thing too, is you can hear these guys on, sometimes on the radio where they try to be cooler than the guest. You're not. Right. And I'm not. I'm right. certainly not. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to be in awe of people like that. You know, when you're sitting there talking with Steven Tyler, that dude makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. Nice. And he's focused on what you're saying. It's, it's an impressive ability he has. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan, just like everybody else. What, so. what would you talk to Don Rickles about? Well, I'm a huge Frank Sinatra fan. Yeah. So uh, when the times we've had him on, we've had him on a few times, and I met him in person, it's hard for me not to go to that era. And, and talk about that because so you, I've read so much about it. You watch all the Dean it. Martin roasts and all that. Oh yeah, but I mean, I've read books and you know, and that was a real that was a real time that had its own code of ethics mm -hmm. that doesn't exist anymore, you know. Um, but he is a an actual you know when you're sitting there and you're talking to him, he's he's the absolutely brutal comedian, he's the legendary comedian that hang with Sinatra, but he's a dad and a grandfather, right? And he you're, that's not lost on you. He comes across as a very nice grandfather. You know, when he's not on stage, that's what you get, which is really nice. Yeah. You know, so. No pretense. At the end of the, at the you know what, I was going to say at the end of the day, but all these guys are the same. That's the interesting thing is that, you know, whether you're talking to Steven Tyler, he's got kids. 
Yep. We all have kids. We're not that different, you know, and that's how I approach it. So when I get starstruck, I get, there's some people that made me nervous, like William Shatner. Really? Made, well, Shatner can be, historically, if you, if you do your research, he can be a tough interview. Really? And the first thing I said was, I'm intimidated by you. And the whole conversation went off from there, and it was great. But I just was honest with him. Yeah. And they're all real people. Yeah. Tom Bergeron's a great friend of the show. He comes on with us all the time. So everybody's kind of not that different once you get to that point. When the callers call in, do they, they actually talk to the celebrities themselves as well? Sometimes, or? sometimes. But mostly, you know, when you're doing interviews nowadays, there's this, they're on a set schedule. Sometimes, the, the, you know, like Tom can just, Tom just comes into the studio unannounced. He flies back from L.A., he comes up and he just walks in the studio and sits down with us because I've known Tom for 20-something years. And sometimes you get long periods of time with him, but a lot of times it's, a, it's like 10 minutes. And so you got to do everything you want to get to everything you can in the 10 minutes. Talk about the things you want to talk about. Talk about the things that they want to talk about because, you know, everybody's got a promotion. They're, they're promoting something. Mm -hmm. Let them do it, and then they give back to you by letting you ask what you want to ask. Do you, so. do you prepare the night before at all, or is it just, yeah, I wake up, I'm going to go in? No, you're never, you're never not preparing. Right. You are, you're always preparing, yeah. whether it's you know, writing down notes. I mean, it used to be early on I would write a page of questions, a page and a half of questions. But what I learned through time is um, when you're talking to someone, <clears throat> whether I'm talking to you or whether I'm talking to Don Rickles or Steven Tyler, what I should be doing is listening. When I ask you the question, I should be listening to your answer. Mm -hmm. And... There are a lot of interviews you can tell when you know, they're asking the question, they're looking down at their next question. They're not hearing the answer. Right. And nine times out of ten, they're giving you another place to go in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I used to write questions, and I no longer do because right. I just want it to be now what you, comes to my mind. Now you're paying Just attention. like you. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's interesting. You know, I, I interviewed some kids. Uh, they do the Lego things. It's yeah. The Legos, and, and, and there are kids that all different ages, mm -hmm. and they had one little exercise, which I thought was fascinating. They would have to look at one, one child next to them. Mm -hmm. They'd have to ask a question mm -hmm. or, or say a word, dog, and that person would have to look at the other child in, in the eye and say, cat. Yeah. So, okay, I'm looking at you in the eye. You said an animal. Now I have to say another animal. And they would go around the, the table, and they would have to look at each other in the eye, acknowledge that, yeah. by, and then they would change the subject. And that was an exercise of eye contact. Yeah. And listening. Right. And I thought, well, that's, that's a really cool exercise. So you're actually paying attention. Watch interviewers. See yeah. how few people do that. Yeah. Watch them. Because, I mean, I've, I've watched for a long time. And, and a lot of them, they'll be, they'll be looking at you. They'll ask the question. And as soon as you start to answer, that's why they cut away during television news. <laughs> yeah. Because the guy is looking down at his notes, which is fine in a lot of ways. But if, if you're doing an interview and you want it to be a conversation, mm -hmm. then that's how you should do it. Right. A news interview is different. Because you've got, you've got topics you need to get. I get it. But I want ours to be like a conversation. Right. And I think that's kind of what we practice here on Gate yeah. City and some of my other shows as well. I mean, I, I try to get a little prepared, but uh, I have notes in front of me, and I haven't looked at them once. Yeah. Because I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you're into photography, too. Yeah. And, and now, uh, what got you into that? Um, it's been a, uh, it, it was something I did, you know, as, as a kid, and it got, I, I got away from it for a long time, and... Uh, <clears throat> then, um, you know, just started, I took the camera out a couple times, and I do landscapes. You know, I, I, I like to drive around the state and uh, just look for things that catch my eye. I have a website, um, which you can see if you'd like, crutchy.com, if you'd like. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> basically, it was a way of, of dealing with a pretty stressful time in my life that, um, that we had as a family. My daughter uh, got sick, and uh, she's fine. But she got sick, and in the wake of dealing with that stress, um, she had a, a blood vessel burst on her brain. Mm. And it was very serious. It was very scary. Uh, and it changed our whole family. And in the wake of that, I turned to the camera as kind of a stress reliever because I could go out and sort of be by myself and just take a look around and kind of the cliche is to stop and smell the roses. Right. But after you go through something like that, you realize how fleeting life is, yeah. and you better appreciate that stuff. Right. So that's what I started doing, and I used the camera to, to do that, and it's kind of blossomed from there. And you do it on a weekly basis? You sell your pictures? Yeah, you I mean, you can, they're available. They're, yeah, I, I, I don't do it to sell them. Mm -hmm. I do it because I love it. I love going out and seeing something 
and being able to capture it and present it in a way that hopes that will evoke an emotion, right? Whether or not it's um, you know, peacefulness or whether it's you know, uh, threatening storm or whatever it is, uh, that's why I do it. I mean, but people have asked for a long time, how can I get them? How can I get them? So I did make a website so they can make some of them for purchase. Do you um, do you use effects or do you try to just use it as you see it? I want it? you to see what I see. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I, I don't change a lot. I mean there are sometimes you I will you know I can you can sharpen it up a little bit because you want the image to be a little crisper, but I'm not a guy that turns the sky green right. and that stuff. That's that's an art. Right. That's creation and that's an art. But I'm you are, I want curious you to see at, what I see. It's what you're seeing. Are you using film or are you using digital? I use digital. Digital. Yeah, okay. I use digital. Interesting. So. There's a, you know, sometimes when I hit the Lowell, we take that back road to uh, the, the, you know, where you were going to the Lowell General Hospital. Mm -hmm. And right along the river, oh, yeah. there's this little horse farm. You right. know, and, and when the fog is just lifting it's beautiful. up. It's beautiful. I don't know if you're aware of that area. I've been, but, I've been down that way. And, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. Right. You know, you could be, all the things that I shoot, almost all of them, are close to the side of the road. Because the point when I started taking pictures was, these are the things you drive past every day on your way to work, right. but you maybe don't pay attention to. You know, I could present a picture to you and you could go, that's where that is? I drive by that every day. I never see it. The only difference between you and me is I stop and look, yeah. you know, and that's the purpose of it. It was kind of like to take the things that you drive by every day, whether it's, whether it's a tree in, in, uh, in fall or whether it's a brook or a fence or whatever. It doesn't even just to sort of get you to maybe say, wow, it's right in front of me, and I yeah. missed it. Yeah. That's we what's have the a, beauty of it. We have a gentleman here in Nashua, uh, John Prestige. He, he basically does all the, the birds of Hollis Crossing. It's yeah. right on the border of Hollis. Right. And he, he bald eagles, everything. It's, I've shot it, bald eagles. It's right here. It, yeah. It's right in our backyard, and you think, this is Nashua? We never grew up. We never, there was never no. bald eagles in New Hampshire. Right. There was, never was. And right. now, all of a sudden, not only are they here in Nashua, they're... They're in places like they're in places like Alton. They're in places that, you know down in Amesbury. They're all, they're all over the place. Fall when you river. see them, yeah. Yeah. when you see them, and that six foot wingspan comes flying over you, it takes your breath away. You know, and the kids these days, you know, you, oh, it's it, it's a bird. No, 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 no. That's an eagle. Yeah, I know. You, don't, don't you get it? I don't know. It? I, maybe it's just because I'm getting older. I don't know. But that's the whole thing. Is exactly. like the amazement of it is when you didn't. We never saw bald eagles. Or Those deer were in Alaska. On the side of the road, right? Yeah. Exactly. So it's it, a, it's a big deal. I think I it, agree. It's funny. I used to uh, live up in the Concord area, and uh, I used to go turkey hunting. Mm -hmm. And you know, I got all the garb on. I had the masks, and I had my little quick, 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 quick. You know, yeah. and I had my my bow and all that. Yeah. And I'd be out there, and I'd see nothing. I'd get in my car, and I'd be driving down the main road. I'd have to stop for the parade. 30 of them. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, are you kidding? It's, it's right. like God's laughing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody's laughing. I believe it. I right? believe it. And you can't take your bow and shoot. That, that's just totally unethical. Right. So maybe if you could just reach out and grab one of them. But that's a, that's a, that's a photo moment. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I was driving around in uh, Agunquit, Maine, and um, I, just, I just will go out early in the morning, sometimes a lot of times before sunrise, and just drive. I may have a destination. I'd say probably 70% of the time I do, but sometimes I don't. Mm. And I'll just drive looking down. I'll take roads I've never taken. I mean, how lost are you going to get with a GPS? Right. You're not. So uh, I do that a lot. And uh, one day I was driving through Gunkwit, Maine, and I literally saw, and they were there, and I counted. It was 58 turkeys. 58. And if, having never grown up having them around, right. 58 turkeys in one spot, just sitting there. That's pretty. That's a lot of turkeys. Yeah. You just know. Gonna mark this down for yeah. Thanksgiving or something. Right, right. But it, you know, seeing that kind of thing, you know, and appreciating it is what the photography really does for me. And that is really kind of a calming, kind of uh, grounding thing. It's great therapy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that it was therapy. It was my wife that pointed it out. Right. She's like, you know, you. This has really helped you, you know, that kind of thing. And I, and I didn't think of it that way. Well, I would imagine, you know, working in radio, there's got to be, you know, oh, I've got this list, I've got all these people to do. You, you do need a place to escape. Oh, yeah. You know, any job. Any job where you're, you know, if it's a high-stress job, you know. The thing about radio is everybody thinks, well, he's on the air till 10, 5.30 to 10, and then he's done. I wish. <laughs> you get up at like 4 o'clock in the morning? Or? Yeah, you get up, I get up at 3, uh, 3.15. Uh, I go. To, I get to the station around four. Uh, we're on the air till ten. 
we'll do various things in the station till 12 or 1, and then you go home and you work and book guests and you plan the rest of the day until you go to bed. It never stops. You know, if you go to the store and something happens to you at the store, that can be part of That's tomorrow's topic, show. Right. You know, it depends. But so you're always kind of have an eye on that. So you need a break from that kind of thing. I'm kind of doing that a little bit myself, not on, on your level, but here at the on Gate City. Yeah. I went to go buy a cake at Crosby's here in Nashua. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't sell that cake this time of year. And I said, oh, OK, well, by the way, would you like to come on my show? Yeah. I hand them my card because, you know, they were a staple. They've been around sure. for 60 years. And They're part of the community. Oh, and, and they've got a history. And I used to walk, I used to go to the school, Temple Street, and walk by and maybe buy a cupcake or something way back when. Yeah. And you guys are still around. Good for you. What's your secret, you know? And I'm sure they got stories to tell. Well, see, I think, too, that, you know, when you talk about local store owners like that, and every town has them. We did a segment on our show uh, not too long ago talking about that very thing. There's a, place that, there's a place in your town that is a store that's owned by a local family that is, a fa is part of the fabric of that community. Yep. That's what they do. They have seen all of the political changes, the politicians come and go. They've seen buildings burn to the ground and be rebuilt. They're part of the fabric of a community, and that's a treasure. Yeah, you know, and that sounds like exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, they they basically are the uh, the equilibrium, I think, of the town. Sure. You drive by, and, oh, they're still there. You know, Alex's Shoes or Crosby's Bakery. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, there's a, a Tokyo Joe's studio here in Nashua. He's actually looking for a new place in, in Nashua. I'm trying to give him a little plug because uh, yeah, he he does a lot for the community, boys club, girls club, and you know he, they help out a lot of people. They, it, we live in a time when every component people own has an eye in front of it, mm -hmm. right? And this is my theory, is that everything is iPhone, iTouch, iPod, I whatever, iPad. It's all about I and not about we. Mm -hmm. And so I think we lose, you know, we're losing our concentration on things like that. Yeah. And that's a crucial part of communities that, I sound like I'm running for office, I'm sorry, but it's really true. No, I think, you we're know. We're losing that sense of community. I think in Nashua, I, I've, I've discovered just by doing this show that there is, it, it never dawned on me until doing this, yeah. how, how many organizations are around here to help people. Yeah. Uh, everywhere you turn, whether it's the theater, whether it's uh, uh, even the Toastmasters, you know, just every, they're all over the place. I know what Toastmasters are. Yeah. I know what those guys do. Yeah, I just had them on here. Yeah. <laughs> I shared the stage with the same stage that the, the Toastmasters did. Rock on. All really? right. Yeah, that's oh. awesome. Well, we give it, you know, they get a free plug. It's know? great. It's yeah. great. And that's, you know, that's, those are the things that you, you know, one of the things that we do, one, part of our show is, is a lot of that, is a lot of, you know, is, is giving back. And, and, you know, we're coming up here in, in the, on the 21st and 22nd of November where, you know, we do a two-day radio auction to help raise money for 11 organizations in New Hampshire mm -hmm. that feed families. Yeah. From, <clears throat> from David's house up at, uh, up at, um, Dartmouth to uh, you know the New Hampshire Food Bank to food banks and, and pantries all across the state. And they're starving. No, <coughs> they're, they're hurting this, this big time. time. Yeah. But every year we, we do that because it's important to 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 give people uh, to give back whenever you can. And there's always got to be a place to go for somebody who's in need. And it's hard for them to do it. A lot of times they don't. The last thing somebody wants to do is admit that they need help. Yeah. You know. Um, and it's great to be able to help places and give them places to go. Right. So, hey, any closing thoughts you want to leave with our guests about uh, about the show? That uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> closing thoughts about the show, um, your show or this your show? show. <laughs> no, it's just you know, I, I work with a great group of folks. Um, like I said, Blacksmith Roadkill, Laura and and Kelly and and Kayla, and uh, um, it's a lot of fun to do the show. And you know, I've been doing it for a long time. People seem to respond well to it. I know we got a lot of listeners in the Nashua area. We greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, we'll just keep on keep on going. You know? and, and the name of your website for your um, your photos? It's simple. It's Kretchy.com. K-R-E-T-C-H-Y. It's right. short for my last name, but I'll be sure to look it up. Yeah, that'd be great. Let me know what you think. Yeah. I I will. All right. I appreciate you coming on the hey, show. Man. Pleasure. Thanks, thanks. man. Thanks. Appreciate it. And, and thanks for watching Gate City Chronicles. If uh, you have an interesting story you want to come on the show and talk about, uh, you know, your, your business or your special interest or your nonprofit, please give me a call or email me at gatecitychronicles at gmail.com. We'd love to have you and hear you talk about your story. Um, that's it for now.
Thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles. And we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark Dean of Clean, the carpet cleaner in Nashua. You can reach them at 603-630-1743. And if you would like some more information about Gate City Chronicles or want to be a guest, contact me at gatecitychronicles at gmail.com. Until next week, thanks for watching. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.